Hi there, um, I wanted to do a video about uh, tuner sensitivity, how weak a signal it can receive. Um, I was inspired to do uh, this video by watching X-Ray Tony B recently. He had on his bench a uh, valve tuner and he was amazed at just how sensitive it was because normally valve tuners aren't that sensitive. Um, but it did have a new vista in its front end and that probably accounted for the uh, fairly high sensitivity of the tuner. Um, new vista is a tiny little valve uh, not much bigger than the T05 size transistor so probably had a lower noise figure than the normal valve would be and he was getting usable sensitivity down to one microvolt which is uh, pretty sensitive for a valve tuner so I've got on the bench here a uh, old Pioneer TX606 now I first had one of these 40 years ago when I was 16 not this particular one but uh, that's long since gone um, in those days I was really into um, FM DXing and I've been using a uh, radio cassette recorder but that was pretty uh, not ideal for DXing really so I persuaded my parents to buy me a tuner for Christmas and they bought me the uh, Pioneer and it's basically the bottom of the range but at the time it cost about £95 which is a hell of a lot of money that's probably near um, 300 in today's money and um, it was great really it was the first time I had something that was sensitive and uh, also the frequency dial was pretty accurate and I used to regularly pick up stations a hundred miles away on a five element beam I used to listen to Capital Radio in London that was a hundred miles away but anyway that's beside the point what I wanted to do was uh, check the sensitivity of this tuner and um, see if I could improve it so I've got one microvolt signal going into it at the moment just to show you one microvolt at 98 megahertz and I've got it muted at the moment so I'll just switch that off and that's the result and it's a bloody fluorescent light I've got up here interfering it's um, LED replacement so I'm just going to turn that off And as you can maybe hear, I can comfortably hear down to one microvolt. And um, what I wanted to do was look at the circuit and mute that and put the other light on again. So I've got the circuit here in front of me and it's a pretty conventional uh, circuit you've got the uh, aerial coming in here balanced 300 ohm or unbalanced 75 ohm and that goes through to the uh, first tuning stage which uh, is then connected into the uh, FAT input transistor which is a 2SK61 which I imagine is a pretty primitive FAT as this is probably designed in the mid to late 70s now what I was wondering is if I put a, a better more modern FAT in there whether I could improve the uh, sensitivity so I was looking up the details on this 2SK61 and I find that it's got a 2.5 dB noise figure at 100 megahertz which is fairly poor really um, as I said it's a pretty primitive Japanese FET so I've 
one of the I thought I'd put a J310 in it. In it. That's a fairly common VHF set. I've got quite a few of them. And that's got a 1.5 dB noise figure at uh, 450 megahertz. So um, should be pretty good at 100 megahertz. And that's at uh, 10 milliamps drain current. And just so happens this circuit is has a 12 milliamp current going through the drain. And I worked that out by uh, measuring across this 150 ohm resistor the voltage and then working out the current through the fact it comes to 12 milliamps so in theory that should work fairly well um, so the next problem is um, putting the uh, new fat in this is the uh, insides and the fat is down there that's the uh, TSK61 and there's no access to the bottom of the unit you only the only way you can get to the underside is by uh, disconnecting all the wires which I don't really want to do so what I'm probably gonna do is um, take this wheel off for the uh, dial string uh, making sure it doesn't unravel in the process because when they unravel it's a hell of a job to get them all back to and get the wire back as it should be I've had to do that a few times and it's not very pleasant. So what I'm going to do, take that off, unscrew all the screws on the board and I think I might be able to get underneath there with the soldering iron and unsolder that old 2SK61 and stick the J310 in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then see what happens. Before I do that, uh, changing the fare, I just want to check um, on the meter signal meter what roughly what an S1 is and I can compare that to the uh, new FET so I'm just going to turn up the generator so that's S1 there and we've got 15.7 microvolts which I should have to write down so now I'll get on and try and change the FET so I got the new FET in, the um, J300, and the whole thing is a complete disaster. It's just completely unstable, it's oscillating, and I'm on 98 at the moment, and there's nothing at all. And all I have to do is stick my fingers anywhere near it, and it goes completely unstable. And, it's like, and I can get it to work sometimes, but as you can see, it's doing all sorts of strange things. So, I'm just going to turn the level up on the generator. Right, that's three microvolts, but no, it's completely, completely unstable. It's obviously got too much gain this fat to be used the way I'm using it. So, um, also it's drawing about 40 milliamps. I don't think it should do that. Um, probably not good for it at all. It hasn't died yet, but um, so I'm gonna scrap this and put it back the way it was. And I might come, yeah, put this 2SK61 back in. And then I might do um, a comparison between three different Pioneer tuners I've got here. Anyway, I'll put the old FET back in. So, got the old FET back in, back to the 2SK61. Still working, it's just about the same. One microvolt input, fairly noisy signal. I'll just increase it to where I had it before to get S1. So that's 15.7 microvolts and it's just over the one so I think it's fine as it is I have to stay like this it's not like I'm going to use it much anyway I've got other tuners and talking of other tuners I think I'll go on to the um, next one in my Pioneer lineup 
Okay, this is the next one in my uh, Pioneer collection. This is the TX608L. The L stands for um, long wave, and they were sold in Europe with the L version. In North America and the uh, rest of the world, they didn't have long wave, obviously. And it's a, it's a modified one because, uh, as you can see, it's got digital readout. Of course, they didn't come with that. This is from the early 80s, this tuner, by the way. And um, I put the digital readout in it um, a few years ago. You can get these um, frequency uh, modules, frequency readout modules off eBay. They're about 10 quid, very cheap really for what they are. Eight digit frequency counter. And they come in red, blue, um, green, and they're all around 10 quid roughly. And they're superb for what they are. You can put a, a programmable offset into it. So I'm here measuring the local oscillator and it's subtracting 10.7 and it's giving me the uh, frequency readout of 97.7 I'm on at the moment and um, it's uh, as you can hear performing quite well with uh, one microvolt <coughs> it's um, probably a bit more sensitive than the last one it uses a uh, 2SK168 I believe it's uh, obviously a more modern FET and um, the other thing I did to it was I um, put that switch in there that switch although it doesn't look very nice I'm not particularly happy with the way it looks but um, that switch is between uh, narrow and wide filters I've put a, a, na a narrow IF filter in it and that's switched with that, with a relay, and the point behind that was just to give it a bit of extra selectivity. If you're going to use it for DXing, it will obviously put out a stick, a weak signal next to a strong signal. And if I switch, it should also make it slightly more sensitive because you're picking up less noise in a narrow position than the wide. If I switch between wide and narrow, it might make a slight difference. That's on narrow. That's on wide, not much difference really, but maybe a slightly. Um, I'll just stick in a bit more signal up to what I had on the other one, 15.7 microvolts I used. Yeah, that's quite a decent signal. Um, so I think this one's probably a bit more more sensitive than the last one when it should be really it's more modern so lastly I show you my pride and joy um, very exciting this one okay the last uh, tuner in my collection and it's the uh, Pioneer TX 9800 and it's probably one of the best analog tuners ever made I mean, Sansui did some really nice ones as well. It might not be the best, but it's close to being one of the best. And um, I paid £150 for that, for this, a few years ago. I don't think that's too bad a price, really, for what it is. I don't know what they cost when they were new. Probably a few hundred. I think it comes from about the same era as the uh, TX606. About 79, 78, 79 roughly. Um, now, this is a pretty sophisticated tuner. It's got several RF stages, tune stages, and um, uses dual gate MOSFETs in the RF front end. And it's pretty sensitive. It's much more sensitive, I think, than the other two were. Um, as you can see, it's not a standard one. I've modified this one as well to put a frequency uh, readout in it. And um, I think the red digits really go with the era. I, I could have put a blue or green display in it, but I like red anyway. Um, some people would say it was a horrendous thing to do to uh, such a classic tuner. 
but I just think it enhances its usability to know that exactly what frequency you're on rather than relying on the uh, on the uh, analog dial um, so I do the same test as before um, oh, by the way this one's got narrow and wide IF bandwidth which is very useful and I think it works better than the one that I tried to do in the, my tuner but anyway I, it's in muting the moment so I just turn off the muting and turn the generator on So that's uh, one microvolt and pretty reasonable signal. That's in wide mode. I put it in narrow. It, I think it becomes a fair bit clearer. And I could probably go even lower than one microvolt. Okay, that's 0.6 microvolts and it's still just about receivable okay that's 0.5 microvolts and I probably won't go any lower than that there's not much point really but um, I'll take it up to the same level as I had on the others 15.7 actually um, that's 2 microvolts and that's a fairly decent signal now And that's about 15 and a half microvolts and uh, getting quite a, a big reading on the meter because the meter really doesn't mean anything at all it just depends how it was adjusted um, and I've used this for de-axing um, and it really is good at pulling out pulling out weak signals that are next to strong ones so it's uh, a classic tuner and I probably won't ever sell it. I use it most days just for music. I've got it connected to my hi-fi system. So that's about it really. Um, it, that's about the end of the video. I hope you uh, enjoyed all my uh, tuners and the first bit was a bit poor, the uh, FET replacement, but at least you got to see some of the old Pioneer tuners. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs>